Repair Clinic makes fixing things easy. With millions of replacement parts available on our website and the help you need to do the repair yourself. Since we encourage you to perform this procedure safely, a warning icon will appear when you should use caution. Before you begin the ice maker installation, refer to the installation manual for a list of recommended tools and parts you may need. Unplug the refrigerator power cord from the electrical outlet or disconnect the power. Carefully pull the refrigerator away from the wall or cabinet space so you can easily access the rear panel. All food items should be removed from the freezer compartment or from the area where the ice maker will be installed. If an ice maker has not been installed in the refrigerator before, you may need to remove a plug from the freezer compartment liner and a label and foam insert from the rear panel to expose the hole where the fill tube will be inserted. Unthread the screw and remove the wiring cover so you can access the ice maker wire harness. Now slide the round foam gasket over the end of the fill tube. Insert the fill tube through the hole in the rear panel with the spout facing down. Use one or more half-inch hex head sheet metal screws to secure the fill tube to the rear panel. Unless you have a model with an open top fill tube, your next step is to slide the appropriate size tube extension over the end of the mounted fill tube. Realign the wiring cover over the fill tube, routing the wire harness through the slot. Secure it with the screw. Next, peel the backing from the two tubing retaining clips to expose the adhesive. Align the clips on the right side of the rear panel. Space them near the middle of the panel for side-by-side -side models or when the freezer is on top, and the lower portion of the panel when the freezer is on the bottom. Unthread the screws securing the lower rear access panel or, if applicable to your model, the single screw securing the small access cover. Set the panel or cover aside. Install the water inlet valve by first connecting the wire connector to the solenoid. Now align the valve bracket on the frame then thread and tighten the two half-inch hex head screws to secure. If applicable, remove the plastic insert from the fill tube spout. Align the water valve tubing clamp over the spout. Thread a half-inch hex head sheet metal screw by hand to hold the clamp in place, but avoid tightening. Next. Fully insert the metal water tube insert into the end of the tubing. Slide the end of the tubing into the end of the fill tube spout. Then tighten the tubing clamp screw. With the tubing leading straight down from the fill tube, press the tubing into the two retaining clips. Any excess tubing should be looped below the water inlet valve and secured behind the retaining clip. Before you mount the ice maker, confirm that there is an access hole for the fill tube. If not, you will need to remove a knockout plug or tap. If this is the first time an ice maker has been installed in the appliance, you may need to remove a blank connector from the wire harness connector and remove the plugs from the three mounting holes in the liner. For side-by-side -side models, you will need to secure mounting clips by threading and tightening three-quarter inch hex head sheet metal screws in the top holes. For models with the freezer on the top or bottom, simply thread the screws into the holes allowing them to protrude out far enough to be able to hang the ice maker on them. Set the ice maker in the freezer compartment and connect the wire harness connectors.
For side-by-side -side models, the ice maker mounting tabs can be slid under the mounting clips. Otherwise, the mounting tabs can be hooked directly onto the screws as you align the fill tube in the access hole. Tighten the screws, but avoid over-tightening. Now thread and tighten a half-inch hex head sheet metal screw to secure the ice maker's bottom mounting bracket. The bottom bracket screws can be loosened to straighten and level the ice maker if necessary. Then retighten. If a water supply line and shutoff valve are not already available in the home, you will need to install them. With the cold water supply shut off, use a quarter inch drill bit to drill an access hole through the front of the nearest cold water supply pipe. File down any rough edges. Now thread the shutoff valve into the front pipe bracket and tighten by hand. Use a wrench to turn the valve an additional 1 8 turn to fully secure. Slide the rubber seal gasket over the shutoff valve's pilot tube. Insert the pilot tube into the hole in the water pipe. Position the rear pipe bracket, then insert the screws through the brackets and thread on the mounting nuts. Avoid over-tightening the nuts. After ensuring the end of the copper tubing is cut evenly and cleanly, slide on a compression nut and a compression sleeve. Now fully insert the tubing into the outlet connector on the shutoff valve. Thread and hand tighten the compression nut. Use a wrench to tighten the nut one additional turn. Make sure the opposite end of the tubing is cut evenly and cleanly. With the cold water supply turned on, rotate the T-handle on the shutoff valve counterclockwise to fully open and flush out the copper tubing. After a few seconds, shut off the valve and clear the tubing of water. Slide a strain relief clamp over the copper tubing. Now slide on the compression nut and the compression sleeve. Remove the protective cap from the inlet fitting on the water inlet valve. Now fully insert the tubing into the water inlet connector. Thread and hand tighten the compression nut. Then use a wrench to tighten the nut one additional turn. Open the shutoff valve again and check both the shutoff valve and the water inlet valve for leakage. If any leaks appear, you can tighten the compression nut in small increments until the leakage stops. Replace the rear access panel or cover and secure it with the screws. Align the strain relief clamp for the copper tubing and secure it with the appropriate rear panel screw. The excess copper tubing should be looped, allowing it to easily fold and unfold so the refrigerator can be moved without straining the connections. Plug the refrigerator power cord back into the electrical outlet and carefully push the appliance back into its proper location. The ice maker should now be ready for use. At Repair Clinic, we make fixing things easy. Thank you for supporting the production of these videos by purchasing your parts from our website.